The coronation has been scheduled for the 6th of May. So major alterations are underway on the treasures, which will be the centerpiece of the ceremony. The crown jewels. I'm Mark Appleby and I'm crown jeweller, which means that I look after all the fantastic regalia, crowns, jewellery and silverware in the Tower of London. On this occasion, we have been asked to modify three crowns for the up and coming coronation on May the 6th. Each monarch's head is a different shape. So for every coronation, the crowns must be adjusted to fit the king and queen. We need to remove as much of the pieces that detach before we start our modification. And at the moment, I'm in the midst of taking off the mond and the cross patty, which holds one of the most famous sapphires in the world, which date back to 1066, the St. Edward's Sapphire. The legend has it that it was worn by Edward the Confessor, and as he was being turned into Westminster, when they opened the coffin, he was still wearing this sapphire as a ring. So incredibly, it's found its way into our imperial state crown. One of the most spectacular jewels in the imperial state crown is a diamond known as Cullinan II. Cullinan number two comes from a large family of nine major stones. Um, it sits in the imperial state crown where its big brother sits in the sovereign scepter. This diamond weighs just under 320 carats. It's D color, it's a flawless diamond. It's just one of the, the most historic diamonds in the world. It's just so priceless that I don't think that you could put a value on that stone today. This is the St. Edward crown. It's the oldest piece of, almost the oldest piece of coronation regalia. It was made in 1660, modelled on a crown that was melted down courtesy of Oliver Cromwell. But this is entirely gold, 18 karat yellow gold, and it's incredibly heavy. It was reduced in size for George V. I've got to put those pieces back now to get it back up to size. Well, in many ways, this is the most important piece of all. We have the Imperial State Crown that everybody's familiar with. The Majesty wore it for state openings and so forth. It's a very nice crown, but this is several centuries older. And the idea is that when this is placed upon someone's head, at that moment, that person becomes the monarch. So if you like, this is the object of coronation. With the coronation just days away, the king and queen are inspecting their modified crowns. We have <laughs> Martin Swift, crown jeweler before myself. Sir. It's taken Sir. months of painstaking work to alter the regalia. What we'd like to do is show you a little of what went on behind the scenes. It'd be great deal easier to wear like that. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. What a task to have to start the chopping. Yeah. Oh. From what we can see, there are eight slit yes. pieces that have been made to make it smaller. Yeah. So I think what we're actually doing is bringing it back up to the size it used to be. But this has happened for generations. Oh. It it last it. happened, we think, in 1911. There was some alteration done to it from when we opened it up, we saw. Mm. It was very much a, a hands-on type of crown, this one. Given that it was made in 1660, some poor souls sitting in a very cold workshop. Goodness me. Possibly with daylight, more likely by candlelight. Without it's, specs. It's, it's, yeah, yes. without specs in those days. How, it, it was, it's incredible engineering for the time, and really. And with plague, and yeah. goodness knows what, and fires going on. 
This may not be instantly recognizable. Yes, that's uh, that's uh, yeah. It is. My grandma was had a very swelled head. Yeah. Because it wasn't if it didn't have to be redone. Redone for that, yeah. Or do yeah. it higher, maybe higher up. Yes, yeah, so it's uh, it easy. As far as we can tell, it wasn't made smaller. Yeah. So I assume yeah. Yeah. your grandfather had quite a head as well. He did, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. the really interesting thing is that little and that goes yeah, that ruby on the top. Yeah. Still have a feeling a plume went in it or something. Correct. So that is the legend that Henry V had his plume on his helmet at the Battle of Agincourt. 